lip velvet and I'm just gonna leave it like that because that looks totally normal. I just finished my cup of coffee. I was half calf, so I'm not super duper crazy. Grab your own cup of coffee, let's sit down, let's put on our makeup for the day and talk. Here we go, she's rolling up her sleeve. So first off I did what I like to think of as an arsenal of skincare because usually I don't use a lot, but I've been liking these. I have the Coco Kind Essence. I have the Alpine Eye Cream, the Juice Beauty Face Cream, and before all of the creams, I put on the Mad Hippie Vitamin C Serum. I have been trying it now for probably a month. I don't have a specific before picture. So much of my skin and what my skin looks like, specifically the brightening and the redness, depends on what I eat. I do see an evening out with all the things that I'm using, and funnily enough, the essence has become my favorite piece of that puzzle. I'm realizing it's helping hydrate in a way that creams haven't done yet. My face is gonna look red, don't freak out. This is the Kinship Self Reflect and Self Reflect. It, Anika BB Cream. I'm doing, by the way, a pretty basic everyday look. Hopping on a Zoom in a minute. I'm gonna use this BB Cream. BB Cream is one of my faves. And you're done. And you're done. Kabuki brush, how did I ever live without it? I don't know. Adding it on under the eye too. Getting that chin discoloration right now, which is so fun. It happens when I eat dairy. And I'm not really an elimination diet person. Like I don't, well, <laughs> I'm not an elimination diet person because I've never been able to stick to it. But I also don't like the idea of eliminating something from your diet completely. I mean, I'm, I'm part Italian. I'm gonna eat bread. It's go I'm gonna have pasta. It's going to happen. I do like the idea of the reset, which is the point of the elimination diet. You're trying to figure out what your body's responding favorably to and not. I just think I eliminate one thing, maybe that was causing inflammation and it kind of helps the inflammation come down a little bit. This is the Saint concealer, by the way. It helps the other parts of the body work better. I really feel like this is one of the most underrated concealers. It will crease if you put on too much, so I understand that that's frustrating, but it works so well as a multitasker. I'm gonna do the multitasker video. Gonna, going to do the multitasker video. The list is very long. This is one of them. Because I like to use it to set the lid. I also like to even out the redness here sometimes that happens if I have too much sugar the day before, or maybe wine. Just gonna set that quickly with my 14E setting powder. I put mm, way too much on, mm, yeah. It helps things from creasing. Uh, it also prevents the shine that happens if you're in a human environment like I am. And it keeps creamy eyeliner in place on the lid. Those are the reasons I use it. Not to set the face, which is what it's made for too. But you know what? There's no rules. I feel like there shouldn't be any rules in makeup. We just learn as we go and we like certain things for our own faces and I think that's totally fine. I don't see a problem. So I'm gonna add eyeliner because my eyes look, where are you, where are you eyes? This is the lip bar straight grind in and this is in a brown color. It's not telling me on here, but I will list everything in the description box below so you can check it out if you wanna look further. This is a very creamy, easy to glide on eyeliner, but it will drop throughout the day. So it'll smudge a little bit or just sort of fade away. So I like to absolutely make sure I have the setting powder on because it seems to hold it in place a little bit better. To know me is to know that I like to smudge out eyeliner because I'm not very precise with it. You can take just sort of a small brush or a sponge, a little spongy tool like this one, which I can't seem to find again. So I hate recommending it because it keeps selling out. It's the Makeup Forever little blending thing, but you can just use a brush to do this. I just like this little tool. I the reason I wanted to do a get ready with me and be unplanned is because I feel like in a lot of ways, I'm unlearning right now. I feel like a lot of people actually did this. If you spent a lot of time indoors during this pandemic, then you had a lot of time to think and people had epiphanies and they didn't go back to their jobs. And I'm sort of at a point where I too am, I'm like a late bloomer, <laughs> I always have been. Um, I'm sort of seeing that the role I'm in currently, uh, I don't think it's really healthy for me anymore, but it's been this huge, it's, it's what's funded this channel. I haven't really pushed hard on sponsorships 
Lawless palette, by the way, next level is the color. It's also a great palette, it's next level. Yeah, it's just, you know, when you work in corporate, it's going to change you in ways. It's gonna change the way you think because it's, it's not a bad thing. I've learned a lot and I'm not saying I'm gonna completely just leave it all together. Cause I've also worked for myself and that has its challenges too, for sure has its challenges, entrepreneur life. I realized that what I did was take what I've learned in corporate and I started applying it to the channel and I started boxing myself in. And when I say boxing myself in, it's it started as one-off product reviews because I had no idea what I was doing in this space. I, I, I had no idea what brushes to use. I knew how to put on makeup, but I, I don't know, I don't know any of it. I didn't know ingredients. I never wore foundation. I still don't really often wear foundation. Uh, all of it. I just wasn't sure. And then it naturally and organically kind of swerves, right? It gets into a little bit skincare and then I realize, wow, I don't like the maximalist 10 step skincare system. Gets into nutrition. How am I gonna talk about nutrition on this channel when people are expecting quick reviews before they buy a product? I thought and thought and thought about it and probably too much and recently the parallel really struck me when at work creating a deck it was all about the social media there and they wanted to stop focusing on products. They wanted to focus on the feeling. TikTok gets it, Gen Z gets it way better than we get it. Then the generation under them will get it way better than they get it and so is the cycle of life. But it made me look at my content. And not only that, but you know, the question was, how do we want people to feel when we post something on social media? And I thought, well, how do I want my people to feel like my people? These people who have been here watching these reviews for years. How do, how do you want to feel? And then I thought, oh, informed and empowered. And then I found myself getting into this marketing strategy for that. And I was like, whoa, 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 girl. The YouTube channel is not your corporate job. You can do what you want to do and what feels good to you because if I've heard one thing consistently from this community, and I'm not talking people who just stumble upon this channel, you know who you are, I appreciate you beyond words could ever describe. And you've always said to me, when you light up, when you engage and you're happy, we're happy, it comes across. Now, I'm sure not everybody feels that way. I'm sure a lot of you are like, can you just get back to the one-off reviews? And I, and I will still have those. I'm not making any sweeping changes to my content calendar yet. What I always love to do and what I do every day is I put on my makeup. I always put it on. I put it on through the pandemic, through just the very beginning of pandemic when pure chaos was happening in this country and across the world. It was the one thing I could do in the morning that made me feel, I don't know how it made me feel. It just was my time. And I always listen to either audiobooks. I'm currently listening to a Lucy Foley book. She's really good. She's like a modern day Agatha Christie. She did the hunting party and the guest list. I try not to listen to too many health podcasts because I found myself completely overwhelmed and like, I can't eat almonds. They're taking up all the water. No more beef. You know, it's it got me crazy. I love them, but I can't watch them. I was kind of longing for something a bit more positive that I could just start my day with. And I couldn't find something that I kept going back to. So I thought maybe I'll just do it myself. And so what I do in my morning routine, I sit on this couch in what I call the sunroom. It's because it gets the most sun in the whole town home. So I'm really excited about that room. This was the bite mascara. I know a lot of people don't like it. I love it. Love it. Best volume. Really reminds me of the Fit Glow one, by the way. I haven't used that in a while because the one I have is old and I don't want to put old stuff close to my eyes, obviously. So wait, mm, yeah, all right. So I read in the morning and then I read something inspirational usually. I try not to look just at my phone. It makes me just not feel so great, unless it's TikTok. Actually, I really love TikTok. It doesn't try so hard right now. I think that'll change eventually. This is the Hint Duet Perfecting Concealer. I like to do touch-ups with this sometimes. And today I was reading the book from the Dalai Lama, totally low key, uh, The Art of Happiness. And I'm reading it piece by piece. It sort of really makes you think. And I don't like to keep reading. I like to kind of think about things. And the topic today was really about allowing ourselves to do what makes us feel happy, not solely based on external factors. So if I'm constantly looking at how my videos are performing and I base my worth on that, very depressing. And I think a lot of people 
we get into this trap. I certainly get into this trap, but I love the coffee time and the book time and the reading time. And then I feel really jazzed up and I want to like put makeup on, but I thought it would be kind of fun to just talk after I read something inspirational to share that energy with the community. And also when I'm reading those books, by the way, the cat is right on my lap. She loves that time. So really what I'm saying is I do it for my cat. What I do. This is pretty much it. Now it's just finishing touches. Cure Weiss, right? Also, I've been toying with the idea of writing another 70 things, and you guys are probably like, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Why are you talking about 70 things? A while ago, when I was in San Francisco, when I maybe it was my second year there, an unfortunate event happened, family event, and it sort of was a catalyst for me to process stuff and I process a bunch through writing. So I wrote this list of 70 things I've learned after moving from Dallas to San Francisco, which is funny because really so many people were moving already from California to Texas or moving to Austin. Much better taxes in um, Texas. Are we really talking about taxes? Ugh. All right, so I wrote this list, sent it out. It was one of those things that you just, it comes through you and you just do it. And those are the things, that's the gift. That's your gift. If you're wondering what your purpose or gift is, I'm not saying it's the only purpose or gift you have, but I have found in my experience that when you are just sort of, that there's not even a lot of thought to it. It's really pure intuition and the world quiets and you're just doing what you do. And then all of a sudden it's there and whatever it is, is created. There's something to that and inspire, I don't know. I actually, I don't even wanna to think too much about it. I'm just thinking of doing a new 70 things list. And then if I do that, I can share it over here and we can sort of have a conversation about it, even though it's technically one way right now. I keep toying with the idea of a live, but we're not there yet. I have to get all the technology ready. And it's like, wow, I'm really going, going ham on the bronze, huh? This is what happens. I get to talking to you and I just, my skin is looking more moisturized and healthy, but I've been really bad with what I've been eating. Just not enough green, not enough water, little things, because I've been incredibly stressed at work. Full disclosure, it's a bit of a you-know-what show, <laughs> and I feel, I feel like I'm gonna have to make some hard decisions soon. Fit Glow Beauty Serum in B. I had that on to prep, by the way. It's light, as you can tell, but it's it is a really nice lip serum. There's a lot of lip treatments and stuff happening right now. While it is pretty expensive, I keep gravitating towards it. Also, that was a gift, so again, full transparency, I'm gonna reach for it and use it. Feels kind of great. Uh, this is the Cloven Hallow. Oh, you know what? Oh my God. I was totally gonna use the Tower 28 colors. Whoops. Okay, so I'm gonna feature some Tower 28s here. These are the Tower 28 Beach Please and Rush Hour. We have the Tower 28 Bronzino West Coast. I've been waiting for this one, I know. Late to the game. Beach Please and Happy Hour. Did I just say that? Yeah, okay, Happy Hour, Rush Hour. Happy Hour is a pinky pink, which I've been using forever. I love using it on the lip as, say you put something on that's a little too dark and you wanna brighten it. This is your friend. Say you want a bold blush. I usually don't do them. This is a really great color for that. And then I really wanted to try the Rush Hour color for blush. Also can use it on eyes, but this these formulas, what? I love a peach. I like a peachier blush. I don't like a pink blush. I'm a very big fan of the peach. Probably because I already have a natural amount of pink in my skin. I probably have pink undertones. Ish. Just sort of like, hello, hi. And then you can do it on your eyes. You can use a brush for this. I would actually recommend using a brush. Sometimes a little warm tone above the lid on my eye pulls things together. I do like to do that sometimes. I don't even think about it. I just, if I put blush here, I like the continuity on the eyes. I don't know why. I don't know why. I just do. The bronze. So this is the lighter of the two bronzes, which was an interesting move on my part because normally, you know, I like a strong bronze. So I have been using this on the face 
really just around the perimeter and it doubles as a bit of a bronzy highlight at the cheekbones. But I'll tell you where I've been, actually it looks really good on the cheekbones right now. Wow, I'm really, I'm really using a lot of bronzer. <laughs> I love this without anything else in the crease of the eye. It looks really, really good. So this is something that you can put on. It's not gonna be a lip necessarily for this skin color, but you can bring these two with you and a concealer and a mascara and maybe an eyeliner. And I feel like you're good if your brows are behaving. If not, then you're gonna wanna bring something for brows. I know I would have to. This just gives a nice little glow. If you do have oily lids, that's really gonna be very tricky for you. And I, even using an eyelid primer is gonna be tough. So you could use it probably more as a highlight or a bronzer. Now I don't know what I was saying about work. This is why I wish it was live, because then somebody could remind me. This is the final look. A little dewy because of the kinship and because I had some moisturizer on underneath. So I could technically put a little setting powder on top to soak that up. Really skin types would probably want to have not much on underneath because the kinship does a good job. The BB cream offsets that. It's not oily or slick in any way. If I wanted to beef up the lip, which I think I do, I'm gonna use the Cloven Hello Lip Velvet and I'm just gonna leave it like that because that looks totally normal. Um, this is in Napa. This is one I keep reaching for. I love this color. So if you just blend it over the hour 28, that's it. It's also helpful because it can be drying if you don't have something underneath. So fit clothes underneath, that was really to prep. I didn't need the second application. Power 28 is there just to kind of boost that fun summery pink. And then Cloven Hallow sort of boop, tips it over the edge. You know what I mean? And sometimes you just, I feel like a bold lip. That's it. There's a lot in front of me. I feel like this was more of an everyday look, but it got a little complicated for my everyday. I hate to talking with you and I can't stop putting makeup on my face. Primarily bronzer. I just go crazy with bronzer. This is the completed, this is a completed look. I'm not gonna do the slow-mo thing that people do because I think it's weird for me. I'm just gonna say goodbye. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. All right, I'll see you guys right back here real soon. Until then.